What's up guys, this is Jeff and today I want to show you how to assemble this bike. If you haven't already watched the bike review, you can find it through the card at the top of this video or the link provided in the description section below. I apologize for the previous videos that only had music in them. Due to copyright issue, I had to replace all the sound with the just music. However, as I promised, I've created a new video that includes explanation and a closer look at the bike. Although, as Moody6 commented, even without explanation, the video itself is self-explanatory. Thanks for all supportive comments. I hope this video will help you during the assembly process. Before you start assembling the bike, it's important to note that the bike comes with a one-year warranty as mentioned in the manual. To use the warranty, you will need to submit the warranty form along the purchase receipt, the bike serial number located under the body, and the bike model you can find it on the frame. If the bike doesn't come with the manual, you can visit the manufacturer's website to access the required information and fill out the necessary details. To assemble this bike, you will require the following tools. A Phillips screwdriver, preferably in size 2 or medium, wrenches in size 10, 13 and 15 mm, Allen wrench in sizes 4, 5, and 6 mm. If you don't have the specific 10 and 13 mm wrenches, you may utilize an adjustable wrench instead. However, it's required to have a 15 mm open in wrench available. I generally recommended utilizing a three way Allen wrench with sizes 4, 5, and 6 mm. These sizes are more commonly employed and can endure significant pressure during assembly. If you need to purchase these tools, I've included a link in the description section below where you can find them at the lowest available price. These bikes are manufactured in China and their measurement system is based on the metric system. However, you can also use inch wrenches if needed. The wrenches may feel slightly loose in some instance, but they are still capable of tightening the screws and nuts. These are the size of inch wrenches that you can use. Some parts of this video are common to all bikes. And in order to be able to give you a complete explanation, I've used several bikes. So don't be surprised if you see different bikes in some part of video. Okay, let's start. First, check the box completely to make sure there is no any damage. If the box appears to be damaged, when opening it, make sure the bike parts are not damaged in the damaged area of the box. Avoid tearing the box completely when removing the bike. Why? The reason for keeping the box is that the bike may have been damaged during shipping and you plan to return it to the store and you will need the box for return process. Before returning the product, you can contact manufacturer customer service and ask them to send you a damaged part free of charge. Each store consider a return time policy for itself. For example, eBay or Amazon, you have 13 days to return the product. Make sure they get the part to you before this date, otherwise return the product. To open the box, use a half an inch deep cutter or knife and start by cutting the top and side of the box. Even you cut through the middle of the top, as long as your cutter blade deep stays within half an inch, it won't affect the bike. After opening the box, visually inspect the internal components including the wheels, front fork, rear derailleur and handlebar to make sure they are free of any damage. After making sure that the bike components are intact, you can take the bike out of the box and still avoid tearing the box. To safely remove the bike, it's recommended to bend your knees slightly and place the box vertically and start taking the bike out in a slow and controlled manner. Pay attention to your posture, do not put in too much pressure on your back to avoid muscle cramp. After removing the bike from the box, do not forget to check the inside of the box completely and do not throw away until you finish assembling the bike. Many times it happened that a small screw or not was still hidden inside the box even under the flaps. For ease of assembly, remove all paper and plastic cover from the bike. However, be careful not to damage the paint on the body when removing them 
as this may lead to rust over time. Also be sure to remove any remaining tape from the body as it will change the bike paint over time. Sometimes, especially for bikes 24 inch and up, removing a bike tire can be challenged. Be careful not to apply too much pressure when trying to remove the tire because it can lead to bend or broken spoke. To successfully remove the wheel, gently push the bike forward and backward while rotating the tire in the same direction to release. In the comments of my previous video, some have asked why I don't use a bike assembly tripod. Well, let me clarify that I assemble bike for regular folks, not experts, and I don't know what percentage of people have a bike tripod. Second question, why do I choose the assembly bike on the floor instead of the table? You know, while a smaller bike like 12 or 16 inch may be manageable on the table, but when it comes to the larger bike like a 24 inch and up, it's a whole different story. Attempting to assemble such a bike on the table would be like trying to fit an elephant into the matchbox. For easier assembly, you can lean the real wheel against a wall or other object. However, as you see, it's not necessary. If present, remove the plastic piece from end of the fork. To determine the correct direction, turn the fork so that the brake system is facing forward. Also, the brake cables should be placed in front or outside of the fork instead of inside or behind the fork. Remove the brake knob or brake noodle or for caliper brakes or V-brakes, slightly loosen the brake wire anchor knot. Remove the head knot and wheel retainer from both sides of the axle. Check the tire and if available, find a direction of rotation of the tire. Lift the bike frame and place the wheel axle in the fork and then open the kick stand. You will notice that the bike is stable, although it's best to always keep one hand on the bike just to be sure. If the fork was bent and you couldn't put the tire in the fork, I made a video and I've put the link in the description section below how to fix it. There is a hole at the end of the fork. Insert the wheel retainer into the hole and tighten the head knot by hand. In only a few limit model, only washer are used for the wheel retainers. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now align the wheel in the center of the fork and slightly tighten the head nut on the one side. Tighten the nut slightly on the other side and finally tighten the head nut on each side completely. And don't forget to check the alignment of the wheel during the process. Remove the plastic cover from the end of the steam rope. If it's difficult to remove, unscrew the steam bolt and remove the plastic. Determine the correct direction of handlebar installation and make sure that the brake cable is not twisted and all cables are facing forward. Place your finger on the steam bolt and insert it into the head tube. If it doesn't fit, loosen the steam bolt a little and try it again. In rare cases, the hole may not align properly and prevent the road from going in place. If this happens, use an iron file to slightly open the head tube. The height of the handle is adjusted. You can increase the height by half the length of the steam rope. Look for a specific mark or color on the bar to indicate the maximum height. For safety, the mark on the road must be inside the tube. 
align the tire with the handlebar and tighten the screw on the steam to secure the handlebar in place. Check the position of the wires, brake lever and shifter to make sure they are properly aligned. If necessary, loosen the screw on the top of the steam and adjust the steam in the correct direction and tighten the screw a little. Adjust the angle of the brake handle horizontally or at angle above 20 degree downwards and tighten the screws. Someone else suggested that I should install the bike seat and handlebar first and then turn the bike upside down to install the front wheel. Dear friends, you have the freedom to choose any assembly method you prefer. There is no limitation, however, with your approach, you would need to readjust the seat and handlebar setting once the bike is returning to its upright position. I would appreciate your comments on this matter as it would be helpful to determine which method is easier overall. On 99% of bikes, the brake level adjustment screw is often found next to the brake handle. You might wonder about purpose. Sometimes people with a smaller hand, especially children, find it difficult to reach and hold the brake handle properly. In such case, you can adjust the screw to reduce the distance between the brake handle and the handlebar grip. If necessary, Start by losing the anchor nut that holds the brake's wire. Then, tighten the screw on the brake handle. As you do this, you will notice that the brake handle moves closer to the handlebar grip and reducing the distance between them. It's important to note that this adjustment doesn't affect the overall performance of the brake system and you can always revert it back to its original state if desired. To install the pedals, find the right side of the pedal by checking the letters R or L labeled on the pedals. If there is no label, look for engraved letters on the bottom of the metal part. If the chain has came off the sun wheel or a sprocket, reinstall it by placing it on the sprocket with your thumb and turning the pedal once. Install the pedal by hand only, without touching the threads and without using tools. Be careful to install the pedal vertically on the crank arm to avoid damage to the pedal and crank threads. For the left side, turn it counterclockwise, or easy way, turn it toward the front of the bike. After making sure the pedal is in the correct position, turn it a few times by hand, then while holding the real wheel, use a 15mm wrench to tighten it. In rare cases when the pedal cannot be installed, first install the pedal on the other side. Sometimes the pedal may be labeled with the letter L, but both pedals are designed for the right side of the bike. If it's not installed on the opposite side, go back and install the pedal from the inside of the crank arm in the opposite direction to the rear of the bike. This is done when the pedal or crank threads is damaged and reversing the installation direction will help rebuild the thread paths for proper installation. Also, if the pedal is installed in this position, then you know you have selected the right pedal. After installing the pedal for one side, repeat the same process for opposite side and make sure that the direction of rotation of the pedal is clockwise or toward the front of the bike.
It doesn't matter if it's right or left, always install them toward the front of the bike. If your wrench gets stuck after tightening the pedal, to remove, push the wrench toward the outside of the crank arm and release it at the same time. If the reflector is loose, align it horizontally and tighten it with the Phillips screwdriver. However, be careful not to over tighten the screw because it may cause the reflector to break. Close the adjusting barrel on brake handle completely and make sure that the groove of the adjusting barrel is not aligned with the groove of the brake handle. Check that the brake pads are only in contact with the rim when braking. Press the brake arm and absorb the position of the pads and adjust them if necessary. To tighten the brake pads, use your thumbs to hold the pads in place as you're tightening them. This prevents the pad from rotating during tightening. Put the brake knob or brake noodle in place. To adjust the tension of the brake cable, press both brake arm with two finger and loosen the anchor knot. Pull the brake cable and then tighten the brake anchor knot. If the brake arms don't move together, start by losing the two tension screw until they are completely loose but still hold in place. Push back the arm that wasn't moving and tighten the tension screw until a little before the end. Hold and release the brake level while losing the tension screw by half a turn. Repeat this process of holding and releasing the brake and loosen the tension screw until both arms move together.
Finally, when both arm move together, slightly tighten the tension screw on both sides to make sure it's staying in place and won't come up. Test the brake by moving the front wheel and pressing the brake lever to make sure the brakes are set correctly. If the rim is warped or bent, I made a video on how to fix it and I've put the link in the description section below. Ideally, the distance between the brake lever and a grip should not be less than half a full size. If necessary, do the same process for the rear brake. If the seat reflector is loose, use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten the reflector screw until it cannot move. Make sure the reflector is level and positioned correctly and be sure not to over tighten the screw as it might break the reflector. I recommended installing the reflector close to the seat lock after adjusting the seat height. Note that I'm mounting the reflector close to the seat for minimal height. Open the quick release seat post lever and place the seat post in the desired position. While holding the quick release seat post nut with one hand, Turn the quick release seat post lever a few times with the other hand until it feels tight. Close the quick release seat post lever regardless of height and direction of the seat and test the movement of the seat. If the seat is still move open the quick release seat post lever while holding the quick nut rotate the lever one full turn and test again. Repeat this step until the seat stops moving. After the seat is secure, open the quick release seat post lever and adjust the height and direction of the seat and close the quick release seat post lever. If the seat continues to move after locking, you may need to tighten the seat clamp nuts. Also, if the seat angle needs to be adjusted, loosen the seat clamp nuts a little, change the seat angle and tighten the nuts again. The height of the seat can be adjusted according to the two age group of people under 18 years old and people over 18 years old. It's important to keep in mind that the body continues to grow until about 18 to 25 of age and then growth slows down. For children under 14, it's recommended to buy a slightly larger bike to accommodate their future growth and choose the right size for people over 18 years old. It should be noted that the age alone is not a determining factor and body size and proportion are more important. Some people may be 10 years old but have the same body size as a 13 years old. For bikes with training wheels, it's enough for children toes to touch the pedals and they can turn them. For bikes without training wheels, the seat height is considered appropriate if toes can touch the floor while sitting on the seat or one foot should be firmly on the ground while the heel of the other foot is flat on the pedal or one foot should be on the ground while the toes on the other foot are placed on the pedal and the foot is slightly bent if for any reason the seat post falls into the seat tube turn the bike upside down and gently tap the bike body to remove the seat post Another solution to prevent the post from the falling inside the seat tube is to install the seat post alone first and then attach the seat. This eliminates the possibility of the seat post falling into the pipe during the installation. At the end, it's necessary to check the work done and make sure that all bolts and nuts are properly tightened. When inflating tires, some people inflate the tire to the amount of air indicated on the tire. However, it's important to note that the value displayed on the tire represents the maximum air pressure that the tire can withstand. 
For most bikes, the recommended air pressure is between 25 to 35 PSI. In another way, after inflating to 20 PSI, sit on the bike to check the tire pressure. If the tire is not fully inflated, increase the amount of the air. Remember, the weight of the cyclist determines the amount of the tire inflation. To inflate the tire, first remove the valve cap and then put the air pump head on it. Sometimes this is difficult because by pressing the tube valve, the valve goes inside. If the tire is slightly inflated, first deflate it completely. Press your thumb on the back of the valve and place the air pump head on it. Inflate the tire halfway and make sure the tire is still on the rim. If part of tire pops out, release some air pressure, put the pops out area back inside the rim and reinflate it again. Over 90% of bike tubes have a Schrader valve while the rest have the Presta valve. For Presta valve, you either need an air pump that supports this type of valve or you need a converter to conversion Presta valve to Schrader valves. To inflate the Presta model, first tighten the nut holding the valve on the rim, then remove the valve cap and open the nut above the valve all the way. Install the converter on it and inflate it like Schrader valve. After inflating, first remove the air pump head, then remove the converter and close the nut above the valve again. And finally, put the cap on the valve. If the nut holding the valve on the rim is loose, tighten it again. And finally, it's very important to teach children how to use brakes before riding a bike. Many accidents of children with trees or walls happen because they are not familiar with the braking system. So spend at least 10 minutes and teach them and don't forget the helmet. If you have any question, please provide a specific details or timestamp from the video so I can better understand your question and provide faster help. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel for support me and turn on all notifications to be the first to know about new videos. Feel free to visit other parts of the channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button. Until next video.